we've been talking about work and we've been talking about kinetic energy. And really, we could, you know, just continue on, and sometimes people do, with this idea that the work, the network on an object is the change in its kinetic energy. But here's the deal. There are some forces that when we do this calculation over and over again, there are some forces that we notice when we do that calculation of work, not network, but some particular work for a particular force, we get a function that we're simply finding the difference between the value of that function from beginning to end every single time. That the work that's done is just the difference in a function. Now, not every force is going to be like that. For example, the force of friction is not like that. If you do the work, say, um, due to friction, right, if I move, say, an object from point A to point B, the work that's done is not just some kind of function that I calculate the difference between. Because if I do a path that's a straight line, I do a certain amount of work. But if I do some twisty, curly path, well, I've had to apply that force over a much longer path to counteract friction. Even moving at constant speed, I have to do a different amount of work. So the work that's done by friction is going to be different here, and it's going to depend on the path. But for forces that we can write as the change in a function, the change in a just some kind of function, we're going to call these conservative forces. Conservative forces. And what we're going to do is we're going to define, we're just going to define a function u such that work by that conservative force is, can be written as minus, whoop, minus the change in u, the change. So why negative? Why negative the change? The reason is that we can then say that the work done by non-conservative forces, the work done by non-conservative forces, basically everything else, is equal to the change in K plus the change in U, or the change in K plus U. And so if there are no other forces other than, so no friction, if there's only these forces that we can write this way, we say that the K plus U is conserved. K plus U, the change is zero, it does not change, is conserved. And we sometimes call K plus U mechanical energy. And the most famous example of this, of a force where if you calculate the work, you'll find that it is always the difference in a function calculated at the beginning and the end is gravity. The sort of classic example is gravity. And for gravity, because gravity is always downward, the force due to gravity, that means the work that gravity does is always just the force of gravity, so mg, for example, mg, <clears throat> specifically, actually, I'm talking about the case where the force of gravity is mg, and it doesn't change. It's always the same magnitude, and it's always downward, so that means that we can write the work that's done by gravity, the work that's done by gravity as, um, say, the change in M, G, Y. So that means if we define Y going upward, then this will be negative, the, dif the difference in M, G, Y. So we can then define this function as U. And so the potential energy near the Earth is just going to be m g y. 
for many times in this class, I've told you that it doesn't matter what direction you pick the signs. For the first time now, it actually does matter. It really does matter. It has to be upward positive, upward positive. The good news is that you can pick the zero point wherever you want because we're always really going to be talking about the change in this function. It doesn't have a lot of meaning to say what is the potential energy, but when we talk about what the change in potential energy is, that's what's going to be interesting. Because if mechanical energy is conserved, we know that the change in potential energy is offset by a change in kinetic energy. And those are the kinds of problems that are going to be the most interesting to us.